Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Oak Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his free bird bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I fought the troll Right then, hello and welcome to episode 58 of the Tech Bytes audio cast with me, Tim, and uh, Roy here as well. It's Tuesday the 23rd of August and it seems like an eternity since we did our last show. I think two and a half weeks by my reckoning. Today we have a plethora of subjects to cover and uh, amongst those is going to be talking about uh, HP, we're going to be looking at Motorola and the Google deal. We've got some music from PJ Morton and Ozo, Ozo Matley, I hope I pronounced that right, as well as the Samsung and Apple situation in Europe, a little bit on GIMP and a few other bits and pieces that spring to mind as we do the show. So without further ado, I'll pass you over to Roy and he's going to kick us off. Hello Roy. Hey there. <coughs> it's been a while. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, last one was the peak of uh, uh, of August, so it, it's really interesting. We, we, we never were actually available at the same time. Uh, and I think we, we had quite a few people asking us why it's taking so long. And I, I was pretty pleased because you see, you know, we don't do the show for uh, a couple of weeks or just even a week and we started getting people asking questions and they look forward to the next one. But anyway, um, this is the first time I believe that before the show, uh, we said basically, uh, spoke for a few minutes and took down some notes of things we probably need to cover because, uh, we have loads of fairly important subjects, uh, which we didn't have a chance to cover. Uh, and the first which I thought well, was not only important but also pretty new was the situation with HP. So, uh, what do you know about it so far? Very little, uh, my dear Roy. I've uh, just come back into the land of computing for being away, hence the uh, no no show for a couple of weeks. So I'm going to let you lead and I'll chip in with my ten pence worth as we go along. Right. So from my point of view, uh, and this is a personal point of view, and you might not agree with me. Uh, back in 2010, there was the uh, the whole situation with Mark Hurd from HP. It was, <clears throat> it was the CEO after a very notorious previous CEO. I think Florina um, was the previous CEO, and there was a scandal to do with pretexting or uh, eavesdropping on journalists and all kinds of stuff, really malicious things. Um, so HP was trying to recover in some ways. Um, Mike Hurd was doing a pretty good job, I think. I uh, became the biggest OEM uh, with the company. I uh, haven't acquired Compaq a long time ago. Uh, they were pretty successful in terms of their reports. And more recently, they acquired uh, Palm. So Palm was working on a Linux-based operating system called WebOS. Uh, and HP was bound to try and enter a growing market of smartphones and tablets and all kinds of stuff. Uh, with Linux and the uh, old devices, not even the option between Windows and Linux, just just basically Linux. Uh, so then last year there was the scandal, uh, I believe a lady called uh, Julia Fisher or something like that, uh, was working as a sort of a hostess or something for HP and there was apparently an affair uh, between her and the CEO uh, who was also ousted for something to do with his uh, uh, professional uh, decisions or behavior or something. And later on, many months after he was fired, uh, it turned out he wasn't really fired any, uh, under any uh, substantiable you know, circumstances. He wasn't supposed to be fired. Uh, and he was defended by all kinds of people. Uh, including uh, the company would well, the company would, which would then hire him was Oracle, uh, uh, and the person who would replace Mike Hurd was a person from SAP, which is a big rival of Oracle. And then there was a lawsuit, and there was all this, you know, confrontation, whatever. Um, and more recently, um, not only was the CEO of HP uh, a former ally of Microsoft, because he used to be the uh, the head of uh, of SAP, and and that's a company which Microsoft almost built, bought back in the back in the days, 
look in the previous decade or something. And then they have been very close to Microsoft partners as well. Uh, there was also the head of software at HP, the vice president. Uh, he, he's a former uh, Microsoft employee. He moved from Microsoft to HP. And now the dumping of the, uh, of the WebOS platform, which is based on Linux, is raising all sorts of questions and, and even a, even a uh, fairly uh, respect, respect, well, respectable journalist, I guess. And a bit of a pundit, more than a journalist, but you know, he's, he's got his opinions and he's obviously very pro-Linux and he doesn't hide that. Uh, that's, uh, that's Stephen, uh, uh, SJBN, whatever his full name. I'm, I'm not even sure what his full name is usually referred to as SJBN. Uh, he basically calls, uh, uh, the person who runs HP, um, and his minions, he uses words, uh, people who weren't really interested in making the, uh, Linux-based platform succeed. So they basically dumped the platform without truly trying to make it succeed. Uh, at the expense of Apple and Android. Uh, the other thing that happens though, and that's the interesting thing I was going to talk to you about, uh, HP, despite being the biggest OEM, is basically quitting the whole business of trying to sell computers, and apparently they want to try and compete against Oracle, in the very same way that uh, SAP was trying to compete with Oracle, making HP more of a, uh, a business-oriented company. So that that kind of shows you from many people's point of view that HP isn't too interested in being a... Uh, a hardware maker, it shows you that the Chinese companies or companies based in the Far East Asia are giving a big, big competition to these uh, uh, OEMs like Dell and HP. And it also shows you that the uh, Windows uh, uh, stronghold, I guess you can call it that, uh, which used to produce a lot of money, but since 2009, almost every quarter, you see a decline in terms of the profit from Windows. Uh, is also proving to be a bit of a depressing market for some, some of the big companies that actually manage to sell computers with Windows. So they just aren't interested in doing that because it isn't as profitable as before. Uh, yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's sort of a well-timed this because I'm currently writing an article at the moment which is going to be published hopefully in the next few days. But it's touching on these very subjects. And what I've been looking at and uh, particularly interested in is the form factors which will be popular with the mainstream or the masses this time next year and into the future. The, there's many claims that the desktop PC is dead and uh, there's other claims on the other side of the fence which say that the desktop PC is always going to be about for people who want to be creative. Yeah, it's really a false dichotomy. Uh, it's, people say, oh, it's, it's dead. No, it's not dead. Well, you could have things in between, you know. Yeah, it, it's, uh, I think the answer lies somewhere in the middle because I think for the majority of users whose aspirations are no more than Facebook posting and a few tweets and maybe a few short emails, which in itself is a is a dying industry for, for many of the mainstream users who use Facebook or whatever social networking they're on to uh, communicate. So I think I've, I've actually quoted the Microsoft post on this very subject and their views on desktop PC still being very much alive. I think uh, when Microsoft say that, it's very much for selfish reasons because if the form factor of a choice for the average user, the masses, the ones that uh, the millions out there, turns out to be a, a tablet, for example, which fits their needs and allows them to get onto Facebook and do the few things that they require online, then it's very dangerous ground for Microsoft who traditionally has had the monopoly over the desktop and the, and the laptop. Uh, as we've seen with smartphones, especially with Android. Because they had those deals with companies like HP to well, install Windows. Yeah. I mean, as we've seen with, with, with smartphones and, uh, dare I say it, Apple as well, people now are very susceptible to the idea of change. They no longer see Microsoft as being the only medium in which to get online, to get your computing done. Android and Apple have, have shown that. I think this whole trend, if for want of a better word, started with the web browser. I think when we saw the likes of Firefox gaining popularity originally over Internet Explorer. Even Netscape. Back yeah. In the days, you yeah. see the Microsoft emails from the mid-90s and they were concerned about GUIs mm -hmm. being put inside the browsers. It's. Uh, I think. I think this is where the rot for Microsoft started to set in because once people saw that they could use things like Firefox instead of Internet Explorer, which by definition in its name suggests that it's the only package that can get you onto the internet, Internet Explorer. And I think once people saw that they could use Firefox, and now more recently we have uh, Chrome and people are using Opera and a plethora of other choices. People are now realizing that you don't need a Microsoft logo on a piece of software in order to get functionality 
that you require. And it was a big myth perpetrated, I think, by Microsoft, which were quite happy to push your products, suggesting that they were the only ones who could get you online, they were the only ones who could get your emails up on your computer screen, and et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think that it started there. Now, when, when we see things like smartphones, and we see Android with so much uh, 